The need to maintain a social distance of two metres in England is being actively reviewed, the government has announced. Boris Johnson said it was the right time to reassess the rules as the overall number of coronavirus cases continues to fall. It's understood that a decision will be taken before July the 4th, which is when restaurants and pubs could open in England. With more, here's our political correspondent, Ian Watson. As many more shops in England prepare to reopen tomorrow, Boris Johnson was practising how to keep his distance. Right this dot here? Yeah. OK, there. on the dot. How are you? Look at this, Look, perfect yeah. screen. Well, Fantastic, yeah, nice fantastic. to see you. He was following his own government's guidance to stay, wherever possible, two metres away from other people. But this is now under review. There are benefits in terms of preventing the disease from two metres. Now, clearly, statistically, uh, those benefits, while important, become uh, less valuable as uh, we get the disease down. The country has come together to, to squash the incidence of the disease down, and that gives us the potential now to look at those rules. We've all got used to social distancing in the shops that remained open, and now a wider range of retailers have invested time and money preparing to follow suit. We've got a strict capacity limit in terms of the number of people that we allow into the store at any given time. After that, uh, as you're walking through the store, we've got wider aisles to make sure that uh, people are segregated nicely. But if some Conservative MPs get their way, much of this will have to be reworked. They say unless two metres is reduced to one by July the 4th, the date pencilled in for the reopening of the hospitality industry in England, then some smaller pubs and restaurants will be unviable. Boris Johnson's review will look at the experience in other countries, such as France and Denmark, which have less strict social distancing. Some Conservative MPs really have been piling the pressure on the Prime Minister to relax the two-metre rule. One of them told me he needs to show political courage. Another said that he needed to get on the front foot and make his presence felt. So the review is a big signal that he understands their concerns, and some have welcomed this. But others tell me that they're worried that this could simply be a way of disguising a delay in taking a difficult political decision. The truth is the hospitality sector in the UK is one of the biggest employers. Uh, and if it doesn't manage to get going, we will see a huge cascade of people onto the unemployment benefits. So it's really vital we move on this and we move fast. Labour accused the Prime Minister of being slow to act, though note they haven't said they'd change the guidance any quicker. The government's dithering, they're delaying, we've got inaction, we've got reviews, and yet again today we're hearing that Boris Johnson's mm, going to okay. take charge. We've been hearing that for weeks. Many Conservative MPs want two to become one, but Boris Johnson isn't asking us to move closer just yet. Ian Watson, BBC News. Well, the review into the two-metre rule comes as 36 more deaths from coronavirus were reported in the latest 24-hour period in hospitals, care homes and in the wider community. It brings the total number of deaths in the UK to 41,698. Given the continuing deaths and infections, any decision to relax the two-metre measure remains controversial. So what is the difference in risk between staying two metres apart or one? Our science editor David Shookman explains. The scientists advising the government say that staying safe from the virus involves several different factors. The most obvious is distance. They reckon that being one metre apart can be up to ten times riskier than being two metres apart. But timing is also important. Spending more than 15 minutes close together will increase the chances of infection, as does being face-to-face, -face, which can be as risky at two metres apart as it is being back-to-back -back with someone at one metre. And indoors, ventilation is a crucial factor. This simulation shows how, when someone coughs, the virus could be spread around a room by the air conditioning. But in this scenario, an open window brings in fresh air which dilutes the virus rather than circulating it. So why do some countries have a lower limit than us? France, for example, has a one-metre rule. Well, it's much stricter than us about people covering their faces. Not only on public transport, shopkeepers have the right to demand that people wear them as well. Australia has a one-and-a-half-metre rule, but there are far fewer cases there than in the UK, so keeping apart doesn't matter so much. What scientists say is really important is that the more you control the virus, the more you can relax about getting closer together.
David Shookman reporting. Tomorrow, all non-essential shops in England are allowed to reopen, although some will take their time before starting up for business again. But the pandemic has accelerated the shift towards online shopping, and there are questions about whether more traditional stores will have to shut permanently. Here's our business correspondent, Katie Austin. The shutters will come up tomorrow at this store in Reading for the first time in two and a half months. Online orders have just kept the business afloat. Now staff are back from furlough preparing to welcome customers back in. But they will only allow six people in at once because of social distancing. We don't think that the consumer confidence is quite there yet. We're putting as much as we can in place to make sure that um, we get as much trade and as much customers we possibly can. But we still feel that we're probably looking at a 20 to 30 percent reduction in turnover. Different retailers will have different processes. Here at Waterstones, books will be quarantined after they've been touched. We will take it from you, or you can leave it at the till for us, or indeed you can place it on this trolley. So the books will go onto this trolley. They will stay in our stockroom for two days, by which time they'll be safe to return to the shop floor. In clothes shops, even if customers can handle goods and browse, some fitting rooms have been closed. For many shops, the chance to reopen is a relief, but challenges lie ahead. Even if there's an initial surge of customers, trade is expected to stay much lower than it was before the crisis. And many shops are having difficult conversations with their landlords about how much rent they can afford to pay. There's concern in the industry the two-metre social distancing guideline will make operating profitably a challenge that is now under review. The Chancellor today encouraged customers to return to shops. I think it's important now that people do have that confidence to go out, especially as we start to reopen these parts of our economy like shops tomorrow. And, and why should people have that confidence? Well, they can have it because we've made enormous progress. Non-essential retail in Northern Ireland restarted on Friday. There's no date yet for Scotland or Wales. Businesses in England will be nervously waiting to see how many customers, increasingly used to online ordering, come back in to store from tomorrow. Katie Austin, BBC News.